we go. What's up, guys? It's Barrow's Boy here for another, actually, the first poll video. So I've been wanting to do these for a while where I talk about the polls that have been coming out in 07 and talk to you guys about why things should be voted one way or another and, you know, basically telling you guys, giving you more information on these polls. So I've, I've gone through, I've looked through some of the questions, I've prepared some, I guess, prepared my answers for you guys. So we're going to go through this right now. So the first question, should we introduce a matchmaking system for mini games. Very simple, easy, yes, lets players, presumably, assuming Jagex does a good job with this, will let players play mini games together much more easily. I like it. Number two, this is where things get a little bit ridiculous. Should we introduce a mini game reward shop where you can use points and tokens from multiple mini games to purchase new items? Now, presumably, this would be, and this is very exciting, this would be a completely new reward shop that you can use tokens, tickets, Whatever you get from every single minigame in RuneScape right now to purchase completely brand new items. So one of those first new items that is proposed in question number three is the Bone Crusher from Dungeoneering. You guys may remember this item. Basically, every time you killed a monster that dropped any form of bones, they were automatically converted into prayer XP. It's a fantastic item. I do think it should come into 07, mainly because it won't affect things that much. I think the Bone Crusher is a great item. It's a great Slayer item. Um, and it's this I, the shop has got to have something, right? So this is one of those things that I definitely think should come into the game. I don't think it has a great effect on gameplay. I think it's very much a convenience thing. It is also a great way to just get kind of general prayer XP. It kind of turns that mechanic of prayer into less of a ridiculous, you know, go to your... You see, like, originally when prayer came out, and you got to assume that when prayer came out, Jagex's initial intention can't have been for you to go to a gilded altar, right? Those didn't even exist. It was the ectofungus. So you got to imagine that, yes, collecting bones was part of the game, but you also got to imagine that if you buried the bones from every one of the monsters you killed from your, you know, from your way from level 3 to 99 in your stats, you'd probably have 99 prayer. Just something to think about. So, definitely okay with Bone Crusher. I think it's a great, great introduction. Now, here's where things get a little, a little hectic, coming up with these next ones. I think that the Rune Pouch, question 4, Totally okay with the rune pouch. Again, saves some inventory space, doesn't change very many mechanics. Something you probably wouldn't bring into the wilderness. That's a big thing on my mind. How will this affect the wilderness? And question five definitely delves into that. So question four, totally okay. We'll just glide we'll glide right over question number four. Because rune pouch, sure. Carry a bunch of runes with you. Totally okay with that. This is where on question five things get a little bit ridiculous. We are talking about bringing augury and rigor prayers into 07. Now, if you guys don't know the impact that not necessarily Augury had on RuneScape, but Rigor, let me tell you something. These are basically piety equivalents for range and mage, and they are fantastic. Rigor is a fantastic prayer. Now, the only thing that made these prayers balanced, at least somewhat balanced, in pre-EOC, was that you had to be on the normal prayer book. Once the new prayer book came out, the curse book, I guess the book of curses, I don't know what you want to call it, got it from the quest Temple at Sentisten, um, which unlocked your curses. You had to be on normal prayers for these specific ones. And that was a big, big, I guess a nerf. It was kind of a nerf to these prayers because curses were just better. You had Soul Split, you had, you know, whatever, Turmoil. Sorry, I'm free, I forget my EOC terminology. So definitely, you know, one of the things was that you couldn't get these prayers on the norm onto the curses book so you had them on the normal prayer book kind of kind of a downside here we don't have turmoil in the game we don't have curses in the game this is a scary thing and honest to god i am not sure how i'm going to be voting in this it's very you know it definitely definitely i as a ranged tank obviously i would love to have rigor but i don't know if it's balanced so right now i just don't know how i'm going to vote i really don't Tentatively, I'm going to put yes. Just for now, I'm not probably not going to finish the poll, but I don't know. I think it would be exciting. I think there's going to need to be some balancing issues. Maybe tone the prayers down a little bit. We'll see how Jagex manages to do that. Number six, if you vote for the minigame shop to be included, you want to sell all level three, all three levels of clue scrolls. Very interesting. I think it's a cool mechanic. Good way to spend a little bit of points you have. Why not? Clues are not exactly big money makers. Sure, maybe someone will get third age on the first day you know, whatever. I think that's totally, there's got to be lower tiered stuff. You got to be able to buy stuff with small amounts of points. Totally okay with that. 
All right, here we go. Should we introduce Zeradomen and Zemarok flags as reward from the castle's Castle Wars reward shop? Why not? We already have flags from our player-owned houses. Why not those? Should we add skirts? Why not? Gender equality, am I right? Should we add a ranged and mage armor set to Castle's War Castle Wars reward shop? I love it. I don't think they'll be very useful, but it's not a bad idea. It's an excellent idea for newer content. Should we allow players to buy bandages that work outside the Castle Wars work outside of Castle Wars in the same way as they do in Castle Wars? The answer here is no, and this is a very important poll question that I think a lot of people are going to skip over and, and not realize how important this is. Bandages heal your run energy. So this is, you know, they don't heal very much prayer. Excuse me, not prayer. <laughs> they don't heal very much HP, but the big bonus from bandages is that they do give you run energy, and part of 07 is run energy management. And I don't think that bandages should be out. One of the main things is that, like, even though they have this, like, big buff to your run energy, I think it's something like 30% once you eat one of them or consume one of them. You're not actually eating a bandage, obviously. But um, that's the big buff. You get run energy. But I think outside of Castle Wars, I think they're effectively useless. They don't heal enough HP. How would it work with a Castle Wars bracelet? You know, you wear a Castle Wars bracelet, and in Castle Wars you get more you know, healing from the bandages. I don't know how this would work. I don't see it being a very ple very feasible or plausible um, item to be added in. So I'm voting no on question 10. If you kill five or more players without dying in Castle Wars, would you like to be buffed, which will increase the damage you deal and make you more difficult to kill? I think this is a really cool mechanic, and I'm so tempted to vote yes, and you know what? I'm going to do it against my better judgment because I think it just adds an interesting new element to Castle Wars. It needs something. Right now, you know, we need more than just Castle Wars. Castle Wars needs more. That, you know, that's it. Anyway, should we add siege weapons to Castle Wars to help break down the doors? Sure, why not? Again, the game needs more. It needs more right now. It's a very, very simple game. And, you know, obviously all you Castle Wars fanatics will disagree with me. Um, Castle Wars is actually very complex, you know, all this stuff. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, it needs more for your basic standard players to have fun with. So definitely question 12. I definitely think that is a great idea. Should we allow players to obtain free elemental mind chaos and death runes within Castle Wars to cast magic at a reduced rate? This is an excellent, excuse me, a reduced XP rate. This is an excellent, excellent question and a really, really tough decision on my part. Because one, I know that as soon as this happens, if it is to happen, everybody and their mom with ancient magics is going to be just spamming the shit out of their spells. It's going to be an ice cube bonanza. It's going to be amazing. Um... The reduced XP rate, very important. Very, very important. Um, so it's kind of, it's it's whether Castle Wars purists, I think a lot of Castle Wars purists will be voting no on this, um, but I think a lot of, you know, just your standard standard players like myself will vote yes, because I think we want to just, I think we want to just go in there and have fun, right? So yes, I'm voting yes on question 13. I think there might be a big divide between your, you know, your average player and your Castle Wars fanatic, but for now, I'm voting yes. Should everyone on your team be rewarded with an extra Castle Wars ticket if your opponents fail to capture your flag? Get an extra ticket for a shutout. All right, I like it. I like any way to get more tickets into the game. I think Castle Wars, um, you don't earn tickets fast enough. That's, I think that's for sure. Yes, add a bank to the Blast Furnace. Absolutely fantastic idea. It is a mini game that should be much more you... It's, you know, again, anything that drives traffic to these mini games with such a small community, I find is a good idea. Blast Furnace needs a bank. You gotta be able to bank there. Get it done. Lower the smithing requirement. Questions 15 and 16. Yes, yes, and more. Yes. Question 17. Should we allow players to use the egg launcher in Barbarian Assault while in combat? I have absolutely no problem with that. I don't think there was any reasons that you couldn't use it um, in combat, other than the fact that, like, you couldn't kill runners. Really, it's just a the, the Egg Launcher is basically a crutch for bad defenders, and I'm all about helping noob defenders. So, yes, let's, let's go ahead and do that. When the call changes in Barbarian Assault, should we change the color of the word to white? Absolutely. More indication, you know, anything to make Barbarian Assault easier. It's a much tougher mini game than people give it credit for, and when those calls change, right now there's no indication that it has changed. So I think that's a great idea. Should we add fighter legs with the same stats as a fighter skirt? but with a plus one strength modifier to the Barbarian Assault Reward Shop. Now, this is huge, guys. This would be a strength-boosting, one of only two strength-boosting leg armors in the game. Think about that for a second. There are only two. Vandos Tacits, 
and what would be the fighter legs. Now this is really, really important. This is this is a big vote here. And you know what? I don't think there's any point to a plus one strength modifier. I'm not sure the I, I it's very bad of me, I didn't look look this up beforehand, but I'm not sure what the melee defense stats are on a fighter skirt. Um, so that's something to really think about. In fact, we should probably think about that right now. Because the main thing about, like, the, the big, the big, um, I guess, like, the big thing to think about here is that you're basically introducing a way for players to have very little defense with some strength bonus added. It's the way the torso's been forever. Now, the problem with it is that it might just be completely useless. Plus one strength? I mean, come on, that's nothing. Obviously, Tacits do a much better job, but would it cause Tacits to crash? Would it make God Wars, which is already becoming less and less profitable, especially Bandos, would this take away from God Wars? My answer to that is probably yes. So I'm going to vote no on the grounds that this is probably a pretty useless update and just kind of a th you know throw it at you type of thing. So I'm voting no on these two just because I think it is really not worth their time. I don't think it's going to be a very popular item. And if it is a very popular item, you cause some crashing, and people who go to Bandos will be very disappointed. Should we remove Split Bark Armor Defense Requirements? No. Split Bark should not be Mystic Equivalent. It should be a different armor. Definitely give it those defensive stats. I like that. That is fine. Here's some questions I've already answered accidentally, but we'll continue on anyway. Should we allow players to get trouble get to trouble brewing without completing Cabin Fever? For those of you who don't know, Cabin Fever is the quest that gives you access to Mostly Harmless. It is the pirate island. It is quite the quest. You actually need quite the requirements um, to get over there. And this is basically um, a way to get traffic to trouble brewing, obviously. So yes, I vote yes on that. Absolutely remove the cooking requirement. Trouble brewing has never been a popular minigame. I have no desire to play it even after these changes, but hell, why not try and it, just give it a shot. At least give Trouble Brewing a chance, man. Just give it a chance. Should the alchemy value of Armadillo be increased so that it is protected on death over crystal equipment and barrels equivalent? My answer is no. That would drive the price of Armadillo down once again, ruining what is already becoming less and less profitable God Wars. We've seen our God Swords crash over the last couple of days. Our Armadillo armor is already low as it is. I don't think that making it protect over equipment will make it... You see, like, there's there's two things that could happen here. More people would buy it because they feel more secure with it, or the price will go down because less and less of it is disappearing from players' deaths. Um, I'm... I'm I'm tending to lean towards the latter, thinking that if you know you make it make it protectable, um, it will it will probably go down in price. But on the other hand, it could easily be the other way. So for right now, I'm going to vote no just to keep it changed. But keep in mind that on question 24, I think that's a very big toss up, and honestly, don't think it's going to get to that 75%. So I'm going to keep it at no for now, um, just you know, just to do that. So this is another big one. Should the, oops, sorry about that. Should the alchemy, oh my god, I've screwed up all my regions. There we go. Should the alchemy value of the armadillo crossbow be increased so that it's protected on death over crystal equipment and barrows equipment? Again, a very good crossbow, giving it basically some security. If you're using it, you will keep it. I'm voting no. Once again, I think, well, you know what? I say that now, and then I kind of think over it in my head, and I'm going to vote yes, because I actually do think that Contrary to this previous question, I think this drives the price up of the Armadillo crossbow. So I'm going to vote yes. I think it drives the price up. I think it gets more people going to Sarah God Wars. Um, that may be a little biased because I like to do Sarah God Wars every now and then. But I do think that the Armadillo crossbow should be a little bit better. The real question here is whether or not it protects over the Dark Bow. That's the big toss up. I wish it was more, you know, I wish this question was more precise. Because what this does for PKing is if you can protect your Armadillo crossbow over a Dark Bow. You can totally gear up in, you know, an armadillo crossbow and some average gear, and then, as well as having the armor crossbow, whip out a debo. Um, and you know, if you're doing high risk, risking two mil of a debo is is nothing. So um, that's an interesting question, something that's not really included, and I wish it was. So I do want more information on that. I hope Jagex. Um, I kind of hope that this vote doesn't pass initially, so that um, or it's very close. So I'm going to go ahead and vote yes. I don't think it's going to pass, but I hope Jagex takes the time to 
reevaluate and give us some more information about this question. So the next couple questions are about NPC contact. I voted yes on both of those. No reason you shouldn't be able to contact those people with NPC contact. Uh, question 28 talks about convenience in buying large amounts of items from shops. Sure, get those bots farming even more items from shops. Why not? Um, should the game applet show, and this is another huge question. They've kind of, I, I'm telling you right now, they really, really, really snuck these questions in. They call it a mini game poll when, holy shit, there is a lot of stuff that is affecting our game. This is basically adding an in-game Orion. For those of you unfamiliar with Orion, it is a client for RuneScape made by the former owner of, I believe, RS Buddy. Um, he's also a notorious account hacker, hacked thousands of accounts um, after making a bad client. Um, but he is now making um, Orion, which basically gives you, shows you a bunch of new information in-game. It shows you the health of the enemy you're fighting. A lot of stuff that I disagree with. Um, and Jagex is offering to give this, us, give this to us for free. So there's kind of two questions here. If you're on the side of Orion, if you like Orion, um, really, I don't know what you vote in this because you have your client. You know, what more would you want? But at the same time, but at the same time, wouldn't you be more secure with a Jagex version of said thing? A much cleaner, a much more precise looking version. Because let's be honest, the Orion version looks like shit. Come on. Like, let, let's be real, folks. It looks terrible. It really does. So, our question becomes, what do we vote in this? If you vote yes and you're against Orion, you're voting to make it a level playing field. You want everyone to have this available to you. If you vote no, you're kind of a steadfast, like, all right, you know what? I don't want this in the game. We got to get rid of it. Like, we don't. And you know what? I'm honestly in that camp. But at the same time, I would hide my icons. They're giving us the option to hide those icons if we want to. I would do it. Just to keep just to keep gameplay. Just to keep gameplay static. So I don't know. This is a very tough question to answer. I really hope everyone really, really thinks about this. Um, for now, I'm voting no. Um, just because I feel like that's that's where we should be. I don't want old school to have that. I think that those bubbles are not part of this game. It is only the orbs. It's, it's absolutely true that these are only the orbs. It's not the, see the health of your enemy, see, you know, it's none of that over, like, in theory, you know, kind of almost, almost un-RuneScapian. It's, it's basically information you already have access to when you're playing RuneScape from Jagex's perspective. So it's definitely better than Orion. However, I still don't think that old school should have it. I really do believe that this game was meant to be played without those orbs, and I'm going to fight that. So, whether or not you guys agree with me, I do think this question is going to end up passing, um, if not being very, very close. But I'm voting no because I really, really do think that we should not be offering those orbs. Just my opinion. Should the smithing menu offer make apps option? No reason not to. Yes, you should be able to identify unidentified liquid vials all at once. Sure. I don't know what that means, but you know what? Go for it. Why not? Last four questions, guys. Should Auto God Bless be willing to convert a Zamorakian spear into a single-handed Zamorakian hasta? On payment of 300,000 coins, the Hasta would be tradable and have the same stats and requirements as the Spear. For those of you wondering what a fucking Hasta is, or Hasta, or Hasta, it is a single-handed Spear. Now, I read an excellent post on the RuneScape 2007 Reddit about the Zami Spear. It talked about how this vote should most definitely pass, and I definitely agree with it. There's one main reason. The Zami Spear has no uses right now absolutely none. There are no monsters in this game other than dragons that are weak to stab that would necessitate using a spear over, say, a whip, godsword, you know, anything like that. There is no reason to own a Zami spear right now. Absolutely none. We need some more incentive to actually buy a Zami spear. I think giving it single-handed power is not, is not overpowered. I think that having it tradable is not an issue. Um, I think this is a good idea, and I think it adds a new element, um, but I also think that without super anti-fire potions, it makes the Zami Spear useful again, um, and in an old-school runescape where I don't want anti-fire potions, I think this is a great idea. So I'm voting yes. Um, I'm sure we'll have some divide among the community about this, just kind of um, some of the people who may want to keep the Zami Spear the way it is, but I definitely agree. I think the Hasta should not have the special attack. I'm going to be very forward with you right now. I think... 
removing the special attack from the Hasta is a fantastic idea. Um, I hope Jagex hears that. I hope that is a um, th that is opinion made quite vocal because I think that you should sacrifice something. There should be some sort of downside. Um, and I don't think a single-handed weapon should be able to stun. That's another thing. Anyway, last two questions. Should a fruit tree patch be added in Yetta along with a gardener and tool leprechaun? Absolutely. I had no idea it wasn't there. It should be there. Fantastic addition. Helps our already struggling farmers to get their levels up. And should a supply of spades be added to the buildings near the barrows? Well, as the barrows boy... Make barrows as hard as fucking possible. Hells no! Punish thine enemy who forgets his spade. Guys, I hope this video was a little bit informative for you. I hope that um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope that you guys go off and at least vote in the poll. I will be providing a link down in the description so that you can go vote in the poll yourselves. From now, that's it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next one. Peace.